Well, let's uh, move on then. Structural steel tubes producer APL Apollo Tubes, that's a stock on our radar. The promoter entity, that's Mr. Rahul Gupta, in August sold close to 15 lakh shares. To discuss this, also how the overall trends are shaping up, we have Mr. Deepak Goel, the Director of Operation and uh, Group CFO at APL Apollo Tubes joins us on the show. Uh, hi, Mr. Goel, good morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, the market wants to... Yeah, know. good morning. It's our pleasure, sir. If the promoter entity wants to sell any further shares in the company, because they have been selling periodically in the last few years and created big wealth as well for shareholders. So will they look to sell any more stake, point number one? And point number two, what will this money be used for? Will it be used to fund their NBFC or do, do they want to put it in the stock market? Uh, your first question is uh, no further plan of sale, any uh, promoter equity. And it's a personal commitment at the promoter's levels. That's why they have sold uh, some quantity. Because it's the only source of the incomes uh, with the promoters. He's only mm -hmm. focused on the APL Apollo tubes. So his shareholding, shareholding is very, uh, it's only, it's below the 30%, but they have some personal commitment that why they have sold the sales. Is that personal commitment to do with that NBFC that they have in their uh, personal holding? Yeah, they have infused some money in the NBFC also okay. and some okay. others' uh, family commitments. You know, but do they want to, you know, maybe deploy some money in the stock market? Because there are some rumors that no. maybe there could be another listed entity yes. that they could be looking at. Is there any plans on mm. that front? I don't want to take any names. No, because sir. I am not aware of it. And he is yeah. only focusing on the APL Apollo. He is not uh, participating mm. in the equity also. He is only focusing okay. on the business. So he is investing in the uh, other family commitments. Okay, got it. All right. So for the time being, you're saying no further stake. And we'll have to yeah. wait by maybe some part of the money gets deployed in the NBFC. But you're not aware yeah. if he wants to put any it's money in the stock market. Previous commitment only. It's a preferential issue. He uh, took it. warrant in the NBFC company and the balance amount is have to be paid in the NBFC. Got right. it. All right. You know, I wanted to ask you about the guidance that you had given us earlier. You were talking about EBITDA per ton moving to around 5,000 rupees per ton. Is that on course? Yeah. And also, I think in yeah, terms yeah. of volumes, volumes we were looking at uh, volumes of close to around 2.95 to around 3 million tons for this year. That's uh, on yes. target, both those two factors? Yeah, yeah. We are stick on our commitment, sir. And mm -hmm. so we are targeting EBITDA is the 5,000 rupees plus. And uh, for the next three years, we are targeting CAGR is 25 to 30%. So, yeah. Mm. Right. Mr. Goel, hi. Uh, good morning. Uh, you know, last time yeah. you were on, uh, one other aspect which uh, I'd like to touch upon is you're the leader in the space, but there is also established steel players who are coming up. I mean, you would spoken about ta uh, the Tatas in the space, JSW in the space, etc. Uh, and right, at that sir. point, you said, well, competition will come, but it's healthy. Market is growing at a fairly healthy pace. How has that evolved yes. since the last time we spoke? Any additional insights there? Uh, I mean, you you told us that uh, Tata's want to be uh, at about 4 million ton capacity by 2030. By that time, you will be at 10 million tons. But any uh, sense on how competition is evolving? And competition is healthy uh, right now, sir. So, and we are not uh, facing any challenge from the JSW and Tata. They are our largest suppliers. So we are taking uh, HR coils only from the two suppliers, JSW and Tata only. So it will be a healthy competition and currently we are not facing any challenge from the raw metal sides also from the competition in the over structural tube sector. Sir. They have their own segments, we have our own segments. Okay. I want to understand what is the opportunity for you in the export market? How is the demand currently? Is there any sign of weakness? Because I think earlier you had said that you're targeting volumes of 150,000 tons in the export market by FY24. Are you on track to doing yeah. that? And what kind of growth do you see over the next one to two years? Yeah, we are we are on track. Uh, export is very small market for us. In the total overall volume, it's only less than 5%. So okay. we have the specific okay. market in the Middle East, in Europe, US, and we are uh, mainly focusing on the large uh, diet pipes, which are not available in the uh, overseas markets. So we are on our targets and uh, we are not facing any challenges in the export market also. Over target is very small for the export. So, uh, from 5% currently, do you have plans to take it up further? If yes, how much would it look like, say, 3-4 years down the line? Uh, it will be in the same range because our That's overall it. capacity will be increased uh, in the next 3 years. So, overall proportions of the 5-4 to 5% will remain the same. 
further i hmm. want to add uh, we are putting a new facility in uh, oman queen uh, oops oops so it will be come by this year end so uh, export will be uh, we will plan from there only okay all right uh, mr goel uh, you know you're saying you're going to be growing volumes at 25 to 30% and the beta number will be around 5000 rupees per ton if i plug in the numbers by fi26 you think you can do around 2500 yes. crores of ebitda that's a gettable number right sorry plugging in the numbers volume growth of 25 to 30% with a beta per yeah. ton of 5000 rupees per ton so yeah. by fi26 the ebitda number could be around 2500 crores at least i ask you this because at current valuation the stock looks expensive but going by the growth trajectory and the profitability it may not be so expensive so 2500 crores in the next few years that's doable yes, sir. Uh, yes 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 we are also targeting <laughs> 2500 by the fi26 sir uh, okay, you are wrong it. sir we got that out of the way. There's an incentive as well that you'll be baking in, right? Because you have the Raipur facility that's eligible for some uh, incentives. Could you tell us what yes, kind sir. of a number are you baking in in terms of incentives on a per annum basis? Per annum, sir, it's around 50 crores every year we are expecting. So it's a incentive for the 15 year. Uh, state government of Chhattisgarh had uh, given a package of 500 crores so for the period of 15 years. So we are expecting we will complete in the 10 years and every year we expect 40 to 50 crores. Okay. It Got will it. be added on the bottom line, directly in the bottom line. Okay. So incentives of 40 to 50 crores. Uh, just hold on to the thoughts, sir. We have the, a new company that's listing, EMS Limited, with a gain of close on 20%. We'll have the management with us at around 10.30 a.m. So we'll get further clarity on the company uh, later on in the next half an hour or so. But uh, Mr. Goel, uh, you know, we were having that chat and I was looking at your debt number. That's come down drastically as well. Any plans to include maybe a dividend policy? That will excite shareholders as well, right? Uh, is, that, is there a plan out there? And is there any inorganic growth that you'll be looking at? Because you're the market leader. There'll be a lot of smaller companies that'll be struggling because you're growing at such a fast clip. Uh, we have no, uh, right now we have no plan for the inorganic uh, in acquisitions. Uh, since uh, our capacity utilization is still it's uh, seventy percent levels. First we reach the five million tons, then we will think upon for the ten million tons uh, we can acquire after twenty six only. It's not okay. right now. Mr. Goel, uh, sorry, I just want to come back to uh, put. I mean, because you know it's a very uh, <clears throat> lucrative market. There are a long runway for growth because the end markets are, will continue to grow uh, at a fairly fast pace. Uh, what, how, what is the thing? I mean, you know, you said that JSW and Tata, for example, are the biggest supply. You source your raw material, but they are also, in a way, the largest threat, right? When they decide that they want to go big in the space, or are you saying, well, that is not a possibility? Uh, I want to mention something here, there, sir. Uh, it's a different uh, products. They are in the raw material, in the HR coils, in the flat products. They have a capacity of 15, 20 million tons. And pipe structural tubing is a very small. Since the number of customer is more. And we have almost more than 1,000 customers. We have SKU is more than 3,000 SKU. So it's a different game altogether, sir. It's a, uh, they have a bulk uh, seller. We are a small mm -hmm. retailers base dealer distribution networks. But a, so but a lucrative this, market. That's why I was saying. But it's, it's lucrative, right? It's a different right? bowl game, sir. It's yeah. a different uh -huh. bowl game. All, okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Goel, we'll leave it at that. Thank you for joining us and you should come and speak to us more often. Uh, you know, you have created a lot of wealth for, uh, for shareholders. Appreciate that and uh, all the best for the future.